Hello everyone and welcome to game 12 of the 1960 World Chess Championship match between Mikhail Tal and Mikhail Botvinnik. Now a lot of you are asking uh, in comments that I should uh, do more this match and uh, less of the other games, uh, but uh, I do have to follow up uh, on some uh, uh, events that are currently happening in the world and uh, this isn't going anywhere. There are still a lot more games from this match, so you know, best not rush things, uh, we, should, we should savor uh, these moments. Uh, so, for those of you who have seen uh, this the, uh, this series uh, from the start, uh, this is game 12. Uh, if you remember, in game 11, Tal, Tal won a great won a great victory with the white pieces. And uh, uh, if you also remember, Tal, uh, Tal, Tal already had a, a three lead point in the match, but he didn't really feel confident. Uh, then Botvinnik won two games in a row, then uh, Tal really didn't feel confident, and uh, now in game 11, Tal managed to win. Uh, he's once again two points in the lead, and now he's more confident than ever to take Botvinnik on with the black pieces. So this is uh, pretty much we're now in the second half of the match, uh, so... Uh, for, for in, in the first half, Tal, Tal did relatively well, and uh, now it's time to continue the match. And Tal says that this is one of the games that uh, most commentators, uh, since since this game was played uh, in the books, in the articles, in the newspapers, uh, they really like to use these games uh, to really point out the mistakes that were made. Uh, but Tal says that this is normal. I mean, uh, you, you go play against Botvinnik and, and play a perfect game. Uh, so let, let's see it. Uh, Botvinnik once again opens with c4. Uh, we have knight to f6, d4, e6, knight to f3. Uh, so once again the ante in Imzo, and here Tal goes for the d5. He transposes into the queen's gambit declined. As uh, he, he does know uh, the lines which Botvinnik favors, so he, he feels relatively comfortable playing this against him. Uh, we have knight to c3, uh, c5, and here Botvinnik plays e3. And e3 uh, was kind of a kind of a surprise for Tal uh, that Botvinnik decided to go like this. Uh, Tal was of course expecting c captures on d5, knight captures on d5, and only then e3. Uh, as this is the variation uh, Botvinnik played in, in his famous game against Alexander Alekhin in the very strong and famous Avro tournament of 1938. Uh, I haven't covered that game yet, but uh, I, I'm considering about covering that tournament uh, entirely, so uh, I don't uh, I don't think I'll be doing just that game. But I did cover Botvinnik's game against Capablanca uh, from the strong Avro tournament of 1938. Uh, I will put a link uh, to that game in the description below if you want to check it out. Uh, it's a very nice game. Uh, so, after c5, uh, no c captures on d5 for Tal, as Botvinnik of course knows that uh, uh, this game being so famous, famous, everyone will be prepared for this line against Botvinnik. Uh, he goes the immediate e3, uh, knight to c6, and now a3. Uh, bishop to d6, and now d captures on c5. Here, this is bishop to d6, uh, Tal uses this maneuver to, to pretty much force Botvinnik to, to capture two tempi. Uh, and uh, in the end, uh, Tal is ve very well prepared for this. So D captures on C5, Bishop captures, and now B4, uh, gaining momentum on the Queen side. B bishop to D6, and now Bishop to D2, Bishop to B2. Uh, Tal castles, C captures on D5, E captures on D5, and now Knight to B5, uh, pressuring that Bishop on D6. And uh, of course, uh, I'm, I'm sure all of you do see why Knight captures on D5 is no way to win a pawn. Knight captures, queen captures, and then bishop to b4 check, loses the queen. Uh, I hope everyone saw that. <laughs> so after e captures on d5, knight to b5, attacking the bishop. Uh, bishop to b8, and now bishop to e2. Uh, here a5, and uh, here you can see that uh, Tal's bishops are uh, very nicely eyeing that eyeing that queen side, uh, and with the move a5, he actually wants to get his a8 rook into the game. Uh, he wants to get it into the game either by playing a captures on b4, either by uh, forcing Botvinnik to play b captures on a5. Uh, Botvinnik plays b captures on a5, uh, and Tal plays knight captures on a5, and Botvinnik is relatively satisfied here. Uh, this knight is... Uh, poorly placed uh, on, the, on the edge of the board, uh, but uh, this is actually what Tal wanted. Now Tal has uh, this rook to a6, a beautiful rook lift, and then from a6 the rook can come into the game uh, via rook to g6 or rook to h6, depending uh, on the position. So Botvinnik castled, and here we have rook to a6. Tal continues with his plan. 
uh, and here bishop to e5. Uh, bishop to e5, Tal really likes this move by Botvinnik, uh, uh, not because it, Tal agrees that it's the strongest move in the position, but it also uh, really complements Botvinnik's style of play. He says that uh, knight b to d4 uh, is also an idea, but after rook to b6, attacking the bishop, bishop moves, knight to c4 and queen to c2. Uh, white is perfectly fine here, but uh, all of the pieces are still on the board and the black does have uh, uh, a bit more activity here. So, bishop to e5, Botvinnik wants to exchange this piece, uh, bishop captures, knight captures, and now rook to e8, attacking the knight. Uh, knight back to d3, uh, we have knight to e4, and uh, this knight to, e knight to e4 is a pretty, pretty uh, aggressive move, actually. Uh, now, Tal is preparing rook to g6, maybe rook to h6, maybe this rook can come to e5, then from e5 he can come to g5. Uh, so, a lot of ideas for Tal's rooks here. Uh, and uh, here comes a move by Botvinnik, and this is my favorite move of the of the entire game because it's really uh, it's really a complicated move and it's really a powerful move. It's like the best move you can play in this position. Uh, it's the engine's favorite, and it's what Botvinnik plays. Uh, but first, uh, I will show you uh, why uh, why it's uh, why it's not an easy move to play. Botvinnik played knight to f4. Uh, his idea is, uh, as he does have, uh, Tal does have an isolated pawn here, so uh, Botvinnik will now organize, uh, play against uh, this isolated pawn and, uh, you know, perhaps try to even capture it, why not? Uh, but uh, this is something that Tal decided to use against Botvinnik, as Tal, Tal knows that uh, Botvinnik really enjoys playing uh, with, past, uh, with isolated pawns and against, pa against past pawns, and uh, Botvinnik is like a master of uh, playing positions where he's the one having uh, an isolated pawn. So Tal thought that if he chooses a variation where he has a, an isolated pawn, that maybe psychologically this will affect Botvinnik to maybe kind of think that he's playing against himself. You know, it's uh, one of the tactics when you play uh, a chess match uh, of this magnitude. Uh, but uh, the reason why knight to f4 is so powerful, because if you go knight to b4 with the same idea of, uh, you know, organizing some, some play against the d5 pawn, uh, then rook to h6 is coming, and now after you capture it, queen captures on d5, now queen to h4, and white is lost. Uh, there is no defense against queen captures on h2. Uh, you could defend this with h3, but after bishop captures, uh, it's game over. Uh, of course, you could you could play g3 and then rook to g6. White white will lose this game very quickly. If you capture, of course, then there is no defense against both of these threats. Uh, but after knight to e4, this move by Tal, Botvinnik plays uh, <laughs> knight to f4. And this move is so excellent because this uh, this prevents the same idea, but it's interesting how it prevents it. Uh, here Tal continued rook to e5, but it's very interesting what happens uh, if you continue with the same idea as I've shown you if the knight came to b4. Uh, now on rook h6, uh, white indeed uh, can capture this pawn, and after queen to h4, now h3 uh, defends the position. Uh, as now the knight from f4 is also guarding the h3 pawn. But here comes the interesting part. Uh, what happens if black plays g5? Simply kicking away this knight and uh, then threatening to capture on h3. Uh, th this is uh, where the where the fun begins. And this is uh, this is what Botvinnik had to see to even, even play knight to f4. Uh, here Botvinnik would have bishop to h5. And bishop to h5 uh, pretty much uh, seals the deal for white. Uh, here you don't really have anything to play with black. Uh, white is threatening to capture on f7. So what do you do here? Uh, if, you, if you capture the bishop with rook captures on h5, then knight captures. You're not going to be able to capture with the queen because queen captures uh, uh, on, on e4. Uh, uh, I mean with the idea that if rook captures, knight captures. And then if you capture uh, with queen captures on h5, uh, first you get knight to c7. And then after this rook moves, then you will grab the knight here. Uh, but um, but after this bishop to h5 move, the strongest idea is uh, bishop to uh, bishop to e6. Uh, and after bishop to e6, this is what you have to find: knight captures, pawn captures, and now uh, a beautiful move: bishop to f7 check. And bishop to f7 check uh, wins the game for white. If you if you don't capture the bishop, for example, if you play king to f8, uh, then queen to d8, threatening queen captures rook on e8 with check. Uh, knight to f6, uh, defending the rook and attacking the queen, queen to c7, and now your rook is attacked and also your knight is attacked on a5. So you have to give up the exchange. Knight to c6, bishop captures, knight captures, and after queen captures on b7, uh, white is in a completely winning position here. 
Uh, but uh, an interesting thing after bishop captures on <laughs> after bishop to f7 check, it's interesting what happens when king captures on f7. Uh, it seems like now white really doesn't have a move, but he actually does, and it's quite an excellent move. Uh, the idea is knight captures on e4. White simply <laughs> takes back the piece, and now you see that if queen captures, now comes knight to d6. Botvinnik uh, checks the king, forks the queen, uh, and after this, this is all done. Uh, you can see that uh, Botvinnik would be up, uh, up a pawn, uh, and in a much better position, uh, he would have uh, much better pawn structure. It's a pretty much a winning end game for Botvinnik. So this is why uh, it's definitely my favorite move, this knight to f4 by Botvinnik, and this is something. This all Botvinnik had to see all of this to play this move. So it's quite, quite. Uh, you know, qu quite a guy. Uh, rook to e5 by Tal. Now defending the d5 pawn and now preparing to bring this rook into the attack. Uh, we have rook to c1 uh, with some nasty ideas, uh, which, but you'll see what I mean by this. Uh, Tal plays rook to h6 and now uh, we have knight to d4. Uh, instead of knight to d4, also knight captures on d5 was possible. Uh, with the idea now, now Botvinnik would be threatening rook captures on c8. Uh, you would have to capture then knight to e7 check. Uh, could be an idea if, if this rook ever moves. So uh, a lot of ideas here. Uh, but uh, Black would simply block all of this with knight to c6, and then after knight to f4, queen to h4. Uh, it's it's a uh, it's a. Uh, not not a position you want to play against uh, Tal. I mean, the position could be very well equal, but if you're playing this against Tal, definitely black has the advantage here. Uh, so after rook to h6, knight to d4 by Botvinnik, not uh, not immediately going for the d5 pawn. Uh, we have knight to c6 and now uh, now g3. Uh, Botvinnik thought about uh, playing f3. F3 f3 is an interesting move, but uh, uh, he decided not to do it. Uh, after after this g3 move, uh, we have g5. Uh, knight to d3 attacking the rook, rook moves, and now bishop to g4. Again, uh, a totally totally a Botvinnik move, uh, exchanging even more material, and after bishop captures, queen captures, uh, it's really hard to see how Tal would continue this attack. Uh, here, knight captures on d4 was played, e captures on d4, uh, and queen to f6. Uh, Tal, ha Tal says that here he definitely did consider a move like f5, but after f5, uh, white can simply capture the f pawn. And after rook to f8, queen to g4, there is really no way to continue uh, this attack with black. Knight to d2 will be met with rook to c8. This is the problem. Uh, queen captures, and now queen captures uh, on g5. Uh, this is with check. King moves, queen captures on d2. Not grabbing the rook, but grabbing the knight on d2. Uh, also, your rook on h6 is still attacked uh, after you move the rook. Uh, queen to b4 and white uh, being up two pawns uh, definitely has compensation. This knight is coming to e5, which will be an excellent square. Uh, white is white is better here. So after e captures on d4, uh, Tal decides to go knight, uh, queen to f6. Uh, knight to e5. Uh, we have knight to d2 now attacking the rook on f1 and here rook f to d1. Also possible for Botvinnik was f4. f4 with the idea that if knight captures, rook captures. Uh, it's very hard to find a move here uh, for black, as, as f captures on g5 will be a threat. Uh, but uh, after black plays rook to g6, then it's, uh, it's, it's a perfectly fine position. With f captures on g5, queen captures, uh, and queen to f3 pressuring that f7 pawn. Uh, this rook can't really move. Uh, you would have to you would have to give it up. So, uh, a very interesting a very interesting position. But uh, the reason Botvinnik didn't go for f4 is because he still wants to win this game. He doesn't want to draw. Uh, so rook f to d1, keeping all of his options open. We have rook captures on e5, and now uh, rook captures on d2. Again, if Botvinnik plays d captures on e5, then comes a knight to f3 check. This is basically Tal Tal would be forced to force a draw here. Uh, because king to f1, now queen to a6 check, king to g2, now rook captures on h2 check, uh, king captures on f3, and now queen to a3 check, capturing the pawn. King e2, queen to a2 check, and now you have to go uh, up the board uh, via king to d3, and then the queen will simply continue checking you, uh, and uh, it, it will be a perpetual. And if you block with the rook, then Tal would even win the game after winning all of these uh, rooks, then Tal would be up three pawns, completely winning uh, queen and pawn end game. So, after rook captures on f5, rook captures on d2, Botvinnik still wants to go for a win, 
uh, rook to e4, uh, queen to c8 check, and uh, this uh, this was probably uh, where where Botvinnik uh, kind of missed it, uh, because here in this move Botvinnik offered a draw, and uh, he offered a draw, and then he played queen to c8 while he offered a draw. And uh, Tal didn't uh, like this move. Here Tal uh, declined the draw uh, because he said that uh, if Botvinnik played queen to d7, uh, that he would in fact accept a draw. Now this does come with the threat of queen captures on b7, queen captures uh, on d5 is a threat, and uh, here he would accept a draw. But since Botvinnik played queen to c8, uh, this comes with check, kind of forcefully winning the b7 pawn. Uh, here uh, Tal declined it because he, he has uh, an idea here. Uh, king to g7, now queen captures on b7 and queen to e6 uh, with the threat of rook to e1. Uh, here Botvinnik defends with rook to f1, he doesn't allow this check, but a more precise move was queen to b2 uh, with the idea that uh, after an exchange happens on e1, this uh, rook on d2 is protected by the queen. Uh, but okay, rook to f1 by Botvinnik, rook to e1 uh, and now queen to b5 guarding that uh, f1 square. Uh, queen to h3 and now f3, making room for the other rook to come to the f file. Uh, queen back to e6 and now rook uh, comes to f2. Uh, rook to f6 and now rook captures on e1. Queen captures and king to g2. Uh, g4, uh, queen to d3, both players are in uh, uh, in some time trouble here as this is move 37, so uh, three more moves have to be made before reaching time control. Uh, h5 by Tal, rook to f1. Queen to e6, uh, f captures on g4, uh, rook to f1, and king captures on f1. So king captures on f1 was move 40, and here h captures on g4 by Tal. This is move 40 for Tal. So uh, time control has been reached, and uh, here uh, they have to adjourn the game. So Botvinnik has, has to decide uh, which move uh, he will uh, he will uh, save for tomorrow. So they, they will be able to analyze it, you know, overnight. Uh, and here the game was adjourned and uh, Tal thought that uh, Tal and Koblenz both thought that uh, King to G2 was definitely the strongest move uh, which would uh, give Black uh, the hardest time playing this endgame and they spent the entire night analyzing King to G2. Tomorrow when they uh, uh, finally got to the game they saw that uh, Botvinnik uh, played the move uh, Pawn to A4 and the Pawn to A4 isn't so strong uh, Tal immediately played queen to b6 and uh, he will be able to pick up this pawn now. Uh, king to f2, now queen to b4 and king to e3. Uh, the thing is you don't really gain anything by queen to d1. You can defend both of these pawns uh, with the queen but you can't really make any progress here. Uh, the queen can never move from d1 because you'll simply grab either either a pawn or the d pawn and you can never push the pawn so uh, doesn't really doesn't really make sense to uh, to keep an eye on it. So uh, instead, Botvinnik tries uh, uh, king to e3. Uh, we have queen captures and now king to f4. Uh, queen to a2. Now queen to e3. Queen captures. Uh, queen checks. King moves and now queen to d6 check. King moves and now queen captures on d5. So the material is equal, but uh, Botvinnik does have the best d pawn. If he can get some uh, somehow with the king up the board uh, and stop the checks from Tal, this could be very well winning. Uh, queen to f2 check, uh, king captures. Now comes f5 check, king uh, king to g5, and now queen captures uh, on g3. King captures on f5, and now queen to g6 check. King to f4, and now queen to f6 check. So Botvinnik does have a pass d pawn, but it's very questionable if if he can actually. Uh, do something about this. King to e3, now king to f8, uh, king to d3, queen to f1 check, king to e4, and queen to g2 check. Uh, Tal says that these checks are kind of pointless. If he simply played king to e7, it's perfectly fine for black, and the black can no longer gain opposition as uh, this king would be too close. Uh, king to e5, now queen checks on g5, king e6, queen e7 check, king to f5, uh, and here Tal finds uh, the only move that. Uh, Pretty much saves the game for black. Uh, if if you try here something like queen to h7, you get king to e5, uh, queen to h5 check, uh, king to d6, and after queen to h2 check, uh, king to uh, queen to e5, and uh, now white will uh, white will win this game as uh, there are no more there are no more checks here, and this pawn is coming up the board. Uh, white will be able to win this game. Uh, so after king to f5, uh, queen to c7, and now black uh, white really doesn't wait, have a way of uh, continuing this. Uh, queen to a8 check, and this is uh, uh, Botvinnik's last trick in the game. Uh, Botvinnik, <laughs> uh, you have to see this position. 
see this position and then Botvinnik plays queen to a8. Uh, Botvinnik is trying to get Tal to play queen to f7, uh, king to f7. Then he will repeat queen to d5, uh, and after queen to <laughs> uh, king to f8, uh, it will be the same position uh, than uh, before Botvinnik played queen to a8 check. Uh, but now it's uh, uh, but now uh, it would be Botvinnik's move. Uh, so uh, he w he kind of would have triangulated the position. Uh, so after this uh, queen to a8, uh, king to e7, not king to f7, uh, queen to e4 check, king to d8, queen to h4 check, king to c8, queen to h8 check, king to b7, uh, queen to e5, offering a trade of queens, now queen checks, uh, king to e4, queen checks, uh, queen blocks, now queen to d5, queen to d6, and now there is no way to kick the black queen off of, off of the d6 square. Uh, queen to f7 check. Uh, it doesn't really give you anything if you if you exchange queens by playing queen to d5 because black will simply ignore it. Of course, not capturing. Uh, he will simply play king c7, and after queen c5 check king d7. Uh, you know, king, queen captures, king captures. Uh, you can never win this as white will never be able to gain opposition on the black king. So after queen to d6, uh, queen to f7 check. Uh, we have king to c8, uh, queen to f5 check, king to d8, queen to a5 check. King moves. Uh, d5 now, uh, king to d7, queen to a7, check, king to d8, queen to a8, king to d7, king to f5, and after king to e7, uh, this is move uh, 72, uh, in this position they finally agreed to a draw. So uh, after Tal winning uh, game 11, he's still uh, two points in the lead, and now they drew game 12, and uh, uh, game 13 is, is a relatively short game, so I, I might even show that one today, we'll, we'll see. Uh, but as tomorrow is the start of the Grand K Chess Classic, I'll probably I'll probably do a nice preview of the of the Carlsen Caruana one of the games. But we'll see. So yeah, uh, I would like to thank Mitun Raj, Mehmet Akin, Atanu Lahiri, Aldo Galvan, and uh, Jose Barrientos for your contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. Uh, as usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Uh, both of them will be from the Talbotvinik series. You can check out game uh, 11 and game 10 if, if you haven't. And also uh, in the description below, there will be a link to the entire playlist if you want to check it out. So yeah, uh, that's it. Thank you all for watching and I will see you soon.